اهلا وسهلا فيكم متابعينا بحلقه اليوم من برنامج يلا اليوم حلقه خاصه مع يوفال دانريج واللي تغيرت حياته في 7 من اكتوبر لما قامت حماس باختطاف والده رح يحكي لنا عن الرعب اللي مروا فيه وعن معاناتهم اليوميه بانتظار تحرير والده وتحرير كل الرهائن المخطوفين من قبل حماس خلونا نسمع قصه يوفال دانريج Yoval, thank you so much for joining us in such an incredibly difficult time. Thank you for having me here. I want to start by asking you to tell us a little bit more about your father. Uh, my father is, is 75 years old. He was kidnapped from his kibbutz on October 7th, mm -hmm. along with my uncle and 75 others. Mm -hmm. We know that he got in Gaza alive mm -hmm. for sure we know that uh, we know his uh, mental condition and health condition gone worse there mm -hmm. but uh, I think it's almost five months we don't have new information so I hope he's still holding on uh, silly this picture is with me all over the world mm -hmm. now it's it's the 10th time I'm abroad out of Israel since October 7th so mm -hmm. because his work he, he is a Holocaust educator he's also a Polish citizen his mm -hmm. major project was to create a dialogue between the Polish and the Israelis about the Holocaust mm -hmm. and he founded the youth groups from Israel to Poland so we're using his his powers around the world to to free him Can you tell me about your memories of that day of October 7th and yeah. how you handled the initial news of the Hamas invasion? Basically, I, I was in, in a town near Jerusalem. There are no sirens there. Approximately 7.30, I wake up, a usual day. And then I heard the TV from, this, from the living room and I knew that my uh, father-in-law is there. And I went there and he told me, look what happened. You have to call your, your family because mm -hmm. along with my father, my mother live in the kibbutz mm -hmm. and my sister and with, the, with her family and my brother with his family. Mm -hmm. So I called my father. It was eight o'clock in the morning. Asked him that he was going on. Mm -hmm. And he said, it's, uh, you don't need to worry. It will be okay. The army will take care of it. But... I didn't understand what happening. And after half an hour, I tried to call him again. The phone was dead. Mm -hmm. So uh, then the pictures tried to be on the TV. So I was sure he's dead. <sighs> and uh, I tried to reach my brother and my sister. They didn't answer. And uh, after an hour, my brother sent me a text message that they are afraid that uh, there are bombings all over. The terrorists in the, all the, over the kibbutz, and mm -hmm. two minutes after, my sister all, uh, told me, sent me a text message, called the army. Where is the army? Where is the police? What what is going on? Approximately three o'clock in the afternoon, my brother sent me a text message that they are safe. That the army took them out of the house. Mm -hmm. And uh, after an hour, he he texts me again that my mother is with them, is with mm -hmm. him, and my sister with the family, and. Nobody knows where, where is my father and my uncle. Mm -hmm. and approximately at six o'clock in the evening, we, the army told us that my uncle and my, bro, uh, my father's houses are empty. Mm -hmm. So I didn't, you know, didn't re realize that he is a hostage. Yes. I thought he is, he is killed somewhere. Mm -hmm. uh, for two weeks, we tried to understand what happened to him. Mm -hmm. And after 18 days, we got, when the first women were released, uh, one of them was with him while, when he was kidnapped. Okay. So we knew that he is alive in the tunnels. Mm -hmm. And after, in the end of November, we got the last information about him. That was the last time you heard about your father. Yeah. How was he when you heard about his in situation in he lost, late November? He lost a lot of, a lot of his weight. Mm -hmm. Uh, we know that he didn't get his medications, mm -hmm. he needs medications. And we also know that he knows that uh, many of his friends are dead. 
he don't know what happened to my brother and my sister and my mother. They are divorced, so he don't. He was alone. Mm -hmm. um, we know that he he's exhausted. We know that they didn't get enough food, enough water. Mm -hmm. Seventy-five years old man. It's extremely difficult. Yes. And your father was a pillar in education. He was, like you said, uh, educating about the Holocaust. He was trying to bring um, the Polish people and the Jewish people and the Israelis closer through that yeah. education. How do you think his work influenced your views and basically how you're reacting and how you're handling the current situation? Actually, it's more than that because he tried to to educate us, the kids, to live without stereotypes of, of anyone. Mm -hmm. That we need to take everyone as equal, uh, even Palestinians who work in the kibbutz. Mm -hmm. I think he he doesn't even come to his mind that something like this can happen. You know, something like that, obviously, it's been having an impact on you that is ongoing and on the community that you grew up in. So if you can tell me the sense of loss and the shift that you've had, you know, from a child who grew up in that town to now this is what happened to your own father there and the community that you grew up with as well. This is a small village. Mm -hmm. Certainly, 350 people. Mm -hmm. 117 were harmed by this this tragedy. Uh, 75, 77 were kidnapped and 40 killed. Mm -hmm. Now the number of killings is up to four, fifth, uh, 51 mm -hmm. because a lot died in captivity. Mm -hmm. And uh, the community is ruined because... Uh, it will take years to come back to the kibbutz. The kibbutz is totally ruined. Mm -hmm. Most of it burned. The one that didn't burn was loaded by the, the people from the, from the Gaza Strip. So I, I really hope the community can build itself again. But I think this community, especially after what happened, have to have this hostages, her hostages back to build the community again. Because every family in the kibbutz are are collapsed, you know. Every family have one that killed or one that kidnapped. And uh, I can say that most of the people that killed, I know pers or, or kidnapped, I know personally. Of my father mm -hmm. friends, they are my, uh, you know, they grew up uh, with me. My teachers. So to see this situation. Yes, that must be very um, devastating yeah. especially also knowing that your father believed in peace and that's how he talked about the we palestinians in gaza we, we all believe in peace before mm -hmm. yeah how do you feel now i'm not a politician to tell you the truth i don't know where it's going to go, to go but after i saw many civilians come in your in yours because a lot of the crimes against humanity that went in yours were committed by civilians mm -hmm. not by uh, not by a uh, trained uh, nukba mm -hmm. so uh, i don't know Hamas fighters, terrorists yes, it was more terrorists mm -hmm. uh, 17 year old kidnapped one of my friends from from school mm -hmm. so when you hear these things and when you see the pictures of Niroz during the, the attack, I don't know what's going on in mm -hmm. Gaza. Mm -hmm. I don't know how, few, how you can rebuild this trust. Mm -hmm. I don't know. How does that make you feel that your father believed in peace and he worked on reconciliation between people and, and education about the Holocaust and that this is what happened. It should break his heart, I'm sure. I'm sure that all the things he believed in just collapsed. I wanted to ask you about the international response and the campaign that you're on to educate and tell people about your father's story and then 
and, and hope to get, and of course the other hostages, in order to get more support for yeah. pressure to get the hostages released. Can you tell me about that campaign and how do you see that response? How do you assess it today? I think that many people don't understand what happened. I mean, ma many people think it's only an Israeli problem. It's only, I don't know, the family's problem. But I see that it's an international problem because what happened in Israel harmed all the international community security. Mm -hmm. When I see people in the campuses speak with ignorance, speak uh, from the river to the sea without mm -hmm. knowing what name of river and what name of the sea, mm -hmm. without knowing anything about Israel, not knowing anything about the conflict. And I, not knowing I that say this go, means go and learn history. Yeah. Go and understand what happened here. Mm -hmm. Go and understand what happened to you if you will support it. When you, I hear things like queer for Palestine and things that go to Gaza. Mm -hmm. I think you won't get back to your family. How do you cope with all of this and how do you hold on to hope? I have no other choice. I have no other choice. If I will sit at home and say, okay, we wait for something to happen, I will think I will get mad. I want everybody back on the 128. I see the other families around us. We are like a big family. So I see uh, one that his brother is in captivity, one is his mother is captivity, one is his child. And I'm worried for every each, each one of them. So it's our obligation for them mm -hmm to do whatever we need to bring them home. I don't care to go to anywhere to talk with anyone mm -hmm. and try to raise awareness so when something will happen. How do you envision the future and what is your message today to the world and to our audience? For now, I can't see future. We live day by day waiting to hear something. So I can't even look 10 days further because I don't know what will happen. I hope the world will will I don't know, wake up before something big will happen in other places because it's around the corner. When I see demonstration in uh, Great Britain and uh, in other countries around, around Europe where the world will go. Mm -hmm. Would you like to say something, if your father could hear you right now, would you like to say a message to him? I believe you're feeling what we're doing. I believe you're feeling, he gets messages, I don't know, maybe in his sleep, because I get messaging for him when I sleep. Mm -hmm. I dream about him and we, we're talking in dreams. I hope it's, it's the same for him when he is holding on because he has grandchildren, he has certain grandchildren that are waiting for him. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to, to say grandpa died. I don't want to go to her. I just want to thank you for your courageousness and for making this campaign and speaking on behalf of your father and all the hostages. I pray for their safe return to their homes and their families. Thank you. Thank you for the thank stage you to, to talk about it. Thank, thank you. you.